Hi, my name is Paulo Hanazi. I'm a PhD student, and today I will talk about deep learning parameterization by applying conditional GAN to the Unsim 2H benchmark. So, uh, ensemble based methods to perform a history match and have it, uh, changed the data simulation in several fields, for example, oceanography and petroleum industry. So, but uh, limited performance is observed in some applications, mainly related with finite ensemble size and Gaussian assumptions. Here, the ES MDA update equation, where the vector containing the uncertain parameters is updated uh, after the computation of the covariances and the difference between the simulator output and the measurements. And how to handle with the non-Gaussian problem? Uh, in the petroleum industry, a uh, standard approach is the so-called parameterization. And what's parameterization? Is the act of performing a mapping before the simulation. So we have the non-Gaussian parameter, we perform a map to a Gaussian field, we also forward the simulator or the forward problem, and we apply the assimilation in this Gaussian field, and then perform an inversion mapping to the original field. Uh, in the last, uh, some deep learning techniques have been used to perform this parameterization. For example, variational autoencoders and generative adversarial networks, also called as GAN. And a recent work compared these two methods and concluded that the autoencoder performed better in the data simulation. However, GAN generated better realizations or more realistic realizations. So what is a GAN? It's a network framework composed by two different networks. A generator, that is a generative network, which takes random vectors and try to generate new samples. And that's Prenator that tries to classify samples as real from the original domain or fake generated by the generator. And the main feature of the GANs is the adversarial training, where the discriminator is trained to better classify, however, the generator is trained to fool the discriminator. This can be explained in a zero-sum game between generator and discriminator, where the losses can be shown by this minimum maximum problem. Here another image that can represent the adversarial, adversarial training. We have the generator and the discriminator. The generator takes a random vector a Latin representation and tries to generate samples and the generated samples and the original ones are taken as input in the discriminator and the discriminator tries to classify the samples between real and fake. Now about large-scale reservoirs. Uh, that are th three-dimensional reservoirs. In the stage of art of the parameterization with this kind of methodology, it's un unfeasible to use three-dimensional convolutions. Um, it's difficult to perform low-dimensional parameterization. So, our methodology states the fact that it's really necessary to apply three-dimensional convolutions because we are not generating new models or new realizations. We are just 
updating the prior ones. So because this, we perform this study where we apply a conditional GAN plus an autoencoder applied in the initial ensemble. We will explain this better in the next slides. First of all, what is a conditional GAN? It's a, a network that has an additional input, which are a conditional setting in bot generator discriminator that controls the output. Um, this condition might be performed by an embedding layer plus an edge or concatenate layer. And we compared both, both and concluded that concatenate showed best performance. <laughs> Here an example of the conditional GAN. We have now the classes, a condition, which are input in the generator and discriminator. In our case, this conditional will be the layer that will be trained or generated. And this strategy also makes possible the increase of the size of the training set. Uh, but the main problem is how to assign the vertical correlations, because now we are using two-dimensional convolutions to represent the three-dimensional reservoirs. The fact is that the iterations in the data simulation must apply only small deviations in the original ensemble. So, why not we start by encoding the original ensemble, like this image. We have the original ensemble, three-dimensional. We can, after the GAN training, train an encoder with the weights of the generator fixed and perform this mapping layer by layer. And after apply the generator, this latent will result exactly the initial reservoir. So we can conclude that the correlation is maintained here. So how is the workflow in this case? We can split into two steps. First, we need to train the gun and the encoder. First, we train the conditional again, then we freeze the generator weights and train on the encoder to perform this one, like the reconstructed reservoir will be exactly the real reservoir, and then we perform the assimilation. We start with the original realizations, pass the realizations to the encoder, obtain an ensemble of initial latent vector, and then perform the assimilation in this latent vector. Now to verify this methodology, we apply it in the benchmark Unisync 2. More specifically, the benchmark Unisync 2H, a case study for history matching. The reservoir has about uh, 65,000 of active cells, a dual porosity and dual permeability model with super K layers. Uh, the field has 11 producers and 9 injectors. And in this case, in our study, we consider it only matrix permeability as uncertain parameter. Why? Uh, we consider because we want to verify only the feasibility of the conditional GAN. And now we are not focused on the assimilation results. We are. We want to see if the reservoir realizations are updated in the assimilation using this framework of the conditional GAN. And you, we use an ensemble size equal to 50 for iterations with constant inflation factors. And now we don't apply any localization method 
because we want to evaluate how the conditional gun performs in this scenario. In the training, we applied 15,000 iterations and the latent dimensional for each layer was equal to 500. So in total, our dimensional of the latent vector that will be updated is equal to 15,000. Now our results. First of all, the performance of the conditional GAN. Here we can compare the histograms of the original ensemble and the ensemble generated by the network. We can see a quite of similarity. This can be improved, but for now sounds to be good because the network can capture the super K features here. And now we can see for three different layers, the some realizations from the original ensemble and from generated ensemble. And here we can see the super K for our layers. And we can see similar realizations, for example, these two ones that don't have this kind of values. Uh, now the history matching performance, we can see over the iterations a reduction in the objective function value. However, because we use it a, lim a limited ensemble size and we didn't apply any localization method, we can see an um, overshooting or extreme values after the data simulation as can be seen here. Here we truncate the values between minus five and plus five to avoid uh, extreme values. But comparing with the prior, we can see this one. And analyzing the posterior standard deviation of the ensemble, we can see here the collapse of the ensemble, which might explain this behavior. Consequently, the extreme values result in these both posterior realizations. And here we can see the ensemble collapse also in the reservoir ensemble now. But the interesting part here in this work is even with these strange realizations, because the extreme values Comparing two prior sections, it, this for a single realization, comparing two prior cross sections and two posterior ones, we can see even with, with this overshooting, the conditional gun was able to keep some kind of vertical correlation as can be seen here, here or here, for example. We can also analyze the time series where the results didn't show a uh, good results, but we can see for some wells and some parameters, for example, this column represents our rate, this one water rate, and here bottom hole pressure. We can see a reduction for some parameters in some case. However, it's important to remember that here we have used only 50 ensemble members and we didn't apply any localization method. So what the conclusions? The conditional gun was able to generate realistic reservoir realizations and even with the reduced latent size, localization is fundamental to avoid ensemble collapse. Here we observe, observe it, ensemble collapse, even you assimilating in the latent space so this reinforced the need of an adaptive localization method, because in this case, we can't apply a distance-based method. And posterior fields with the conditional GAN plus the encoder present super K features, 
even with collapse and semi posterior values. This is interesting. And the next steps will be two paths improves the parameterization and improves the assimilation. In the parameterization, we can evaluate the improve the GAN validation methods. Uh, we might implement pixel wise loss to ignore the new blocks, improving the GAN training and evaluate the GAN performance in other uncertain parameter, for example, the fracture spacing. And in the assimilation, we can evaluate the impact of adaptive localization. And finally, when all these things define it, we can apply the history matching considering all uncertain parameters. Finally, we would like to thank our sponsors and attenders. And thank you.